and we had agreed to wipe the slate clean. And then I found out I was blocked on Instagram. So I was like, you know what? F this whole like. <laughs> just, now, wait a minute. Yeah. No. And it was just like, I didn't do anything. And I understand maybe you were still hurt off of what happened and the connection that it had and you weren't ready to have to continue a friendship which is fine but tell me that like I genuinely feel like yes um I wanted to open it with just the value of friendship um when I started thinking about, and actually I thought about this 10 minutes ago, for starters, I don't have an agenda, but you know this because you've listened to my podcast. I never have an agenda. I don't even have, I have some questions that I found online, may get to them, may not. You know how we get when we start talking. Um, but I was thinking the difference there is when you're making friends as adults versus when you're making ki- friends as kids. You know, as kids, you're at school. So you see this person, you see people literally every day, five days a week for the whole year. Whereas when you're an adult, A, sometimes you're traumatized by childhood friendships. So you're guarded and you kind of just don't know how to make friends. So I'll start and say Charlene technically is what started my friendship and creating this group. Like Charlene was my plug in. And Charlene, you're not going to remember this. I don't know if you will, but- when we were all part of this devilish, humane, inhumane <laughs> group chat of 20,000 people, <laughs> I remember Charlene hit me up on a side once. It was just like, oh, you work in Seaport? And I, I love Charlene, you know, I love you. But in the beginning, I was just like, why is this person talking to me? Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, do I, do I continue? And I remember hitting up Ray Jean. And I was like, do you know who Shar Chin is? Like, she's like, yeah, she's cool. Like, if she's hitting you up, it's probably because you guys both work in Seaport and you guys can connect. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> like, I honestly, <laughs> I did not know outside of people I work with and people I went to school with, I I didn't have friends. Like, I don't, I did not know how to make friends. So Charlene, shout out to you for like making, th- taking the initiative and reaching out and we like, Hey, so you work in Seaport? Yeah, me too. We should grab lunch. <laughs> and that we did. And that we, we did. did. Yeah. And then that's, and then I met April because April, you were also in Seaport and you would join mm-hmm. us. You would join us for lunch. And then we started going to all of these events and Taylor came around and then Nadia mm-hmm. blew her tushy up to the bean <laughs> yeah to come insert into our, our chaotic lives but it it has been a blessing and even though we went from a chat of over 2000 people the five of us <laughs> somehow formed this amazing bond to the point that we call ourselves the shift um sisters healing in faith together honestly one of the reasons i wanted to have a conversation about friendship is I don't think, now I really don't care who come for me for this. I don't think people have genuine friendships these days. And when I say genuine friendships, I do look at our friendships, our friendships and the fact that y'all, we <laughs> do not shy away from calling each other out when we are wrong. And I think what I admire most about that is we don't take it to our, it doesn't end friend. We've been going since what 2016 when was my no behavior 27 2016 it had to be the end of 2016 like the fall into 2017 yeah Yeah. because and november 2016 to boston and i didn't come around to like summer 2017 okay so then then 2016 and the fact that i don't been i I probably what have i been called out the most probably (laughs) no probably but in yes. fairness, you, you some honestly, of the things have you just were, been you because not, you, you said something. It's not like you're. Do, I don't want people to think that you out here wilding because no, 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 I wasn't. No, no, Sometimes no, 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 no,
Yo, you I'm the friend you have to warn other people like, look, you just you gotta just take her <laughs> as it is. She doesn't have a filter, nor does she have any boundaries. As you can tell, I had we spoke about boundaries last season with Renard. I just I'm learning to have them. Um who would you say have to be? I'm sorry, I think we just have to be honest about the difference between calling someone out and then calling someone in right? Ooh, speak on it go ahead because like okay I, I feel as though we do more calling in than calling out I the reeling like reeling it back call, in yeah because i feel like when you call someone out there's like a, a air of disrespect to it an air mm. of i'm trying to tell you what this standard is when really i feel like what we did was like hey shoot let, let's talk about this or hey nadia let's talk about this because we understand X, Y, Z to be happening. What is your perspective? How can we make sure that, you know, you're not acting out from a place that's going to be harmful to you in the future? So I feel as though us calling each other in, especially because we always did it privately, yeah. even if some of our actions were public, we always talked to each other privately. And we just really wanted to get to a sense of where you were emotionally about the case or where you were um you know, mentally about the case, because, you know, sometimes we do let how we feel sometimes dictate our actions. So I, I, I would prefer to call it calling in because we was never embarrassed. We was never felt disrespected by one another. Um, I definitely feel as though we've always approached each other with the air of respect and, you know, sisterhood and, and family, because, you know, we didn't want nobody to feel bad. But we was like, sis, you wrong. We're going we to fix this. <laughs> And it's always out of place of love and trust, right? Like I trust y'all to want what's best for me. So even if I'm doing something that's not right or that's going to harm me in the long run, if you guys say, April, don't do that or whatever, I know it's because you want what's best for me. And that's right. what makes it easy to call someone in as Nadia is saying. Right, right. Yeah, I'll jump in here too. Um, calling in is bringing back. You know, mm. um, it could be a reset, but it's also bringing you back to your community who has an opinion on something that you value versus calling you out is like, hey, you did that, you fix it. And this was, this has never been a, you did that, you fix it relationship. It's like, this is what happened. Where are we going from here? It's mm. not where you going, but where are we going from here? So that is. That is something that I think our group has that a lot of groups don't have. Mm. Mm. Sure. <laughs> I mean, what is said is said. At the end of the day, like you said, Shu, we have developed a genuine friendship. So yeah. there's genuine relationship amongst all of us, collectively and individually. Like I met April through a women's um, organization and April has always been a firecracker in my <laughs> eye. And for good reason. Like she don't hold no, she don't hold no water to nobody. She's a a, a smooth five two with <laughs> not even. barely on a good day. But she will she will call you out with love when need be. Yeah. Like our relationship individually, like I'm I will check in with April ever so often. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. And so I think at the end of the day, we've all developed we've all developed a relationship with one mm -hmm. another, which is why when we do call in to one another, mm -hmm. it comes from a place of love. Because I right. know how everybody moves. Right. With Kayla out here on IG living her best life, <laughs> and I be on the side like, ma'am, <laughs> <laughs> is this is this what we doing? Is this what? Okay, just want to make sure. Right. 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 that location on for me. Listen, that location off. Taylor's the reason why I actually stay consistent with with my locks. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you see? Uh -huh. her, it's yeah. all a connection. Like because yeah. of her, I met the stylist that I have. Yep. And my hair has been flourishing the way it's been flourishing. A Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh. Again, connection, relationship, love. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh. And good people know good people. And if you can continue That's doing right. that, that speaks well on you. That Absolutely. speaks well on the people that become a part of your community, mm -hmm. you know, like that's, I'll be honest, like all of you all, I'm the youngest out of our group. However, 
when I moved to Boston, I was in my very early 20s. I think I was 21. And mm. when you start talking about the shifting and the shaping and the molding of your womanhood, you want to look for healthy examples. Like I might not be a health, I might not have been a healthy example at that time, but I had healthy examples through y'all. You know, um, trial, error, transparency, and also how to hold it in, how to how to hold that secret, uh, or not necessarily a secret, but how to hold the the content of our group together. You know, like that is, yeah, the, you guys pay, played a major part in shaping a portion of my womanhood. I will uh-huh. say, this. yeah, Taylor, I know. Yeah. I will say this, when I went down to Atlanta, which I got to go back down to Atlanta with Ooh. husband free and baby free, but <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> Taylor by far is the best gatekeeper there is known to mankind. April and Nadia, y'all gonna have to, you know, top it or equal it or I haven't been there yet, but I will. But when I tell you we went down for, what was it? Battle of the Bands. I think we got there on Friday. Friday and left on Sunday. Taylor then took us all up and throughout Atlanta in less than 48 hours. Okay. Like it and that 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 to me is sisterhood. Like she's just like, wait, what y'all trying to do? Where are you trying to go? What if we're gonna go here? You know, we might run into celebrities here and over here, like literally just driving through streets. This store right here is owned by this person that does this and well, have I did you... the same thing for y'all in a city that I'm familiar with that y'all have done for me in Boston. Mm-hmm. Oh. Go here if you want yeah. this. <laughs> if you need here, don't go here after this time. These people are over here. If you need this, holler at those folks. <laughs> same thing. It's only right. You know, yeah. that I reciprocate. That's true. Um, Nadia, who you came from Florida. What prompted you to come to Boston Oh, I moved to Boston for a check. Um, as you know, I work in pharma. So, <clears throat> you know, in Miami, it wasn't really a, a hub for my industry, whereas I wanted to take my career a little bit further. So I took the leap of faith and I, I moved to Boston. And, uh, ooh, y'all read high. <laughs> um, I was living way out in Lawrence. and um, No, but your, your apartment was amazing, though. It was. Your, your cathedral um, ceilings. <laughs> okay. And the right? brick wall. Yeah, it's brick so wall. nice. If it wasn't a 45 hour drive to your apartment, I'd have been there on a regular basis. <laughs> and I would have loved to have y'all on a regular basis. But uh, no, definitely. I, I I moved to Boston strictly for career. I've noticed that I've always made moves uh, for my career. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens with the next move. Okay. And I, I thought about this the other day too. Um, just cause when it got winter over here, I hate the cold, like, and I'm a winter baby. Like it just doesn't make any sense why I hate the cold as much as I do. And specifically this upcoming winter, I don't know what it is about what's cap- what's about to come, but I'm just anxious and I hate it, but I got to give y'all kudos for the three of you both. Well, three, Nadia, April, and Taylor for like just taking the leap of faith and leaving Boston. Charlene, you can't leave me. Just so you're aware of it. Please don't go. Don't make that face. I can't do that. <laughs> that face says, uh, <laughs> that face says, uh, sis, I got, we going to talk after this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. But if, if you can change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Oh, the faces. I don't know if it's a list or if it's just going, uh, I like me. I ain't finna change nothing. No, I mean, to be to be honest, um, if I could change one thing about myself, um, I would change the fact that I'm so unforgiving. Mm. Um, you know, we spoke about earlier about the things that bind us in our sisterhood and, you know, how we call each other in and love. And it shouldn't have to take for me to have an established bond with people in order for me to want to exercise certain um, things that are reflective of what keeps community, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think of what keeps community is, you know, hearing people out, um, you know, being forgiving, being understanding, and we should, you know, try to be that way, kind and compassionate 
to people, even if we don't have those deep established bonds. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for me, a flaw that I have is that at times I can be very unforgiving. Um, If someone has wronged me, I look at the situation and although I may let go of whatever may have happened, I usually um, dismiss that person and we can't throw people away and and we shouldn't have that attitude because everyone, you know, deserves grace. Everyone deserves a chance. Um, now people do have, you know, repeated behaviors. And you know, if you, we see that about someone then you know, let them have their distance, but, um, I never stick around to even see or notice that's a repeated behavior. So I think it would be good if I was a little bit more forgiving. I was going to say, you know, Nadia Zion used to be like, I fight. <laughs> I do like to fight. I do like to fight because I feel like, you know, sometimes people look at me and they be like, oh, you know, she's quiet. She's small. She's. Um, you know, she's really reserved into herself. And I feel like sometimes people be trying me and I'm like, why, why are you, why are you trying me? Cause I don't be bothering nobody, especially them niggas. But I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, you know, the way she said amen, that. amen, amen. <laughs> she, she stressed out every letter <laughs> in that word. Nadia, right. I'm gonna let somebody else right. take the floor, take, take the floor before Nadia keep going. <laughs> Sorry, what would you change saying. about yourself? What would I change about myself? Um, mm. And I have a way to flip this question too, but I'm going to give everybody the opportunity since Nadia answered. I am working on letting go of deep down what other people think of me. Mm. I think for a very long time, secretly, I have always, that's always mattered to me, how I show up how people perceive me and how I show up for people. But I think of lately, I've been in the headspace of like, if I know in my heart, what I'm doing is coming from a genuine place that if you choose to take it away, you choose to take it away. And that includes family too. Mm. (laughs) So y'all know me, like I'm always keep the peace, you know, blah, blah, blah. Of lately, I have been like, you know what? If things get a little ruffled, things get a little ruffled. Because at the end of the day, I know my heart. And so if my heart is in the right place. That's all that matters. Let the chips fall where they may at this point in my life. I'm actually very shocked to hear you say that because I never thought of you as someone who cared about other people's opinion. Like you, 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 when you said secretly, I in my head I was like you right like you did a, that's a really good secret because the way you walk I, the way you I move agree. like I would have never shocked. yeah like I was just like what <laughs> who who, yeah. who are you talking about like not you um that's dope April um I would say it really hasn't changed for me about what I would change because uh, I'm still working on it um is being patient. Mm. I am not very patient. It's not, not even forgiveness. It's along the same lines, but not, it's not that. Yeah. Because I just, I expect for people or situations to go the way I want them to go. I'm not big into surprises. I try to do what I can to control a situation. And if it's not what I like it to be, then I might like exit that situation instead of trying to work through it. So it's more about like the patience and just letting it unfold versus it being like, nah, that's not what I expected. So I'm off this. Continued journey, continued journey with that. I learned about that in therapy, actually. It means you're, you're, and it's the same thing with me. You're overly structured. You're too structured. And it's a control thing. And it's like. Very much so. I like to be in control of my situation. Yeah. April. I said April. (laughs) Taylor. (laughs) Um. So like, I think I'm going to tell you what mine is, but the common theme so far is autonomy. Mm. Like everyone and their presentation, what they can and cannot do, what they will and won't accept. That's all a part of autonomy. Um, But mine is, I'll be honest with you, realizing that my inner self talk and my intuition aren't the same. Mm. Um, and I'll explain that. So my inner self talk, I realize is negative because it questions, it judges, and Mm. I feel like she's someone else 
but she like has a lot of my inner self talk has a lot to do with how I move, but my intuition is there, but lies dormant until it feels something's off and has to step in. And I feel like there are two different things, but I thought they were the same. I thought we were all mm-hmm. moving in step and we weren't. Mm-hmm. Um, so just realizing how to quiet that self-talk, but how to also flip that self-talk to have be positive. So, and, and that has paralyzed me to like going places, not going places, wearing stuff, not wearing stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just realizing those things are different and taking the time to just say, all right, well, why do we feel this way? Do we go against it? Is intuition saying something different? So yeah, just moving forward like that. Yeah. Well, with with me, it's kind of similar to Taylor. My, I've learned that my anxiety controls me, and <laughs> um, and I learned that yesterday when my therapist said it to me. She's like, "You, your your anxiety controls you," and so I need to. You kind of can't necessarily cure anxiety. You have to learn to manage it, and it's gonna always be there. But you have to be able to know it's there and still allow yourself like time to relax. Like I can't relax. Like I can't, like if I sit down for five minutes, I'm just like, I need to be doing something. I need to, Oh, there's, there's a pile over here. I can get to it. And even though I've already told myself, Oh, I'm gonna do this tomorrow. But the fact that I have 15 minutes to myself, instead of just like laying down and taking that 15 minutes to meditate or giving me me time, I'm like, let me use this 15 minutes to get through this pile right here so that I can relax tomorrow, knowing damn well tomorrow I'm going to find something else to do so I don't ever get to relax. Um, so that's what I'm working on changing. And how I wanted to flip the question was, what is a trait from someone in the group that you wish you could learn or have? Mm. I feel good with these questions. Oh, you were prepared. These are such good questions. Thank you. And that's why I didn't let anybody prepare for it because I wanted to be like, oh, okay, let's think this through. (laughs) I'll say Taylor has a way of being unapologetic and who she is that Mm -hmm. I that I admire very much. Yeah. The way you Oh, thank you. Don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Go for real. Um, I'm, I always, I've, I've always respected and appreciated how you are very comfortable in the skin that you're in. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and you show up unapologetically. I've seen how you, even when you were in Boston, you, you move, like you move how you move. And I think that attracts a certain energy, um, in the spaces that you're in. And I've always, I've always appreciated that about you, Taylor, truthfully. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I didn't even have my wine yet, y'all. I don't even know where it is. I didn't have any either. I don't have none in the house. I'll get a champagne. <laughs> I need to make a cup of coffee, so I definitely have my coffee here. <laughs> I have my Jay, water. What are you drinking? Oh, yeah, this water. is water. Okay. I okay, water. so y'all got me <laughs> feeling bad that I'm talking wait, about wine. It, wait, <laughs> no, I wanted to, but I realized it wasn't enough time. There's mezcal on the side. We're just going to hold that over there. Um, mm-hmm. I'll say this in response and then I'll go next if that's okay but in response my skin being comfortable in my skin is it's an everyday challenge because my skin has looked different like mm-hmm. it's been larger it's been smaller it's been secure it's been insecure and it continues to go through that cycle but you know what's not gonna change me walking into that room I gotta mm-hmm. do it anyway and mm-hmm. there is even if I don't feel that way after, it's more like just cross the cross the threshold. Once you do that, you know, you can pop into another world. Like, it, you never know. So just a lot of it is just forcing myself. I'm not going to hold you. So it, a lot of it's forced. Like, and, and not to be fake but you forced, have to. but like, right. But you have to like jump off the ledge or else like you're not going to know. You know, what, you knew what everything else was. So it's like, well, I'm here. So <laughs> if you didn't like it, oh, well, like see you next time like there's another (laughs) chance to experience it um but for me I would actually say it's a combination of uh April and Nadia's piece so for me I feel like 
there are some instances that or some things that I've gone through that I wish I would have just dumped earlier and been like, you know what, I'm out. But also I should have spoken up because spoken up speaking up would have led to me leaving earlier. Like mm. things that didn't serve me or things that I didn't like. And I'm like, hey, can we change this? You know, like the power to change versus somebody saying, Well, I mean, we already did this. This is why didn't you say something? Like, cause I wasn't feeling it. But April, nah, excuse me. Um, we need <laughs> So what are your thoughts on that? I don't think we can do that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that comes, honestly, that just comes with like time. I'm not even going to say age. It just comes with time and like recognizing your own, your own (laughs) piece and like how much you value that over anything else. Like I, I overthink things sometimes and that kind of helps me not do that. If it's not serving me, like, why am I sitting in that space with something? Um, So that just that's all that is. That's just me wanting to be more at peace with myself because there are things in this world that I can't control, but I can control how a situation makes me feel. Um, and I can just remove myself from that. Sometimes I do it too hastily, but I can remove myself from that or tell you how you're making me feel. So that way, like I at least got it off my chest instead of it being in my mind and I'm over and I'm overthinking it. Yeah. My self peace is what makes me do that. Inner peace, I should say. <laughs> Um, I'll go next. I'm actually going to say, Stu, your willingness to try new things and to be committed to them. Like Thanksgiving, you were saying that, which is obviously odd. I didn't realize you took it this way. <laughs> that like, I was, I would question some of the things that you said you wanted to do and be like, oh, that, that fits you more or whatever. <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't doing it because I didn't think you should do certain things. Yeah. Really, I don't. I just see things that like align with who you are and why you, and why you want to do them. But I would say your willingness and your, your adventure, your, your sense of adventure and to go, yep, I'm going to do this. And look at me now doing it. And even if you take a step back, you're willing to come back to it when it serves you, when you're ready. That, I wish I had more of that. Oh, Oh, yeah. She's talking about, remember the hair episode when we were talking about me going to hair school? <laughs> and April was like, when I was like, guys, I'm going to go to hair school. April was like, that makes sense. Okay. Because, you know, when you said <laughs> you wanted to go to nursing, nursing school, yeah. you're like, right. okay, I'm going to support you. But well, the thing with the nursing school, not that you wouldn't make a great nurse. That's not what I was really <laughs> thinking. I just was wondering was how much was it? because of the care that you were giving for your yeah. mom, right? Yeah. Like, that's like that's and, all it is was. that really something that you want to do or is it something that your current situation was projecting that you wanted to do? So I just wanted you to think about that a little bit more. That's I, will, all. I will say this lately. I don't know if it's because I've been seeing scrubs or nurses. I'm just like, should I just like readdress this nursing situation? Like, do I want to do this? But no, I don't. No, um, I no, thank you. Um, I'll go, Shar. Your leadership, and I don't know if you know or realize that you are a leader and a, is it a trailblazer? Trailblazer. I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> um, Charlene, you can walk into a room and everybody knows that you're somebody that should be listened to. And I don't, I don't know if you do that on purpose. I don't even know if you realize it, which is why when you said, you know, people's opinion of you, you, that kind of guided you. I'm just like, no. No, it don't. Like you just you walk in and when you and when you speak, it's just like everybody shut up. <laughs> like Charlene is speaking. Like I don't even think we've ever seen you mad. We I don't think we've had to get to that level of seeing you upset because when you speak, everyone stops and listens. So I I I wish I had that. No, so like part of the whole well, first thank you. <laughs> I'm like, you no, know, what do you mean no? <laughs> First, I, I, I received that. I take that in. Um, I think growing up, I was very much taught like A plus B equals C, one plus two equals three. And like that cadence is like how me and my siblings have always been raised. In the midst of that, though, I think sometimes that has brought up a little bit of people pleasing in me because I'm like, I got to do this in order to do this in order to get to this. Mm-hmm. And then at times, I think that has um contributed to how I show up in certain rooms especially in a networking situation like you put me in a room where I'm I got to network and like talk to people and we talk in business and corporate America I can do that with my eyes closed 
of lately though, I have been more mindful of stepping into who I am authentically, which I do feel is part of that leadership. So I think regardless, there is a leadership aspect to me yeah, and just how I move. Yeah. So there's, there's that piece too. Um, but yeah. I stay, I stay calling Charlie like, um, so what do you think about this? <laughs> How do you well, think this is supposed to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a way Nadia, you're up. You know, from all of you all, I would say y'all remind me, all of y'all remind me to have fun. Um, you know, like it was mentioned earlier, I moved to Boston for work. It was a career thing. And when I wasn't with y'all, I was working. I was flying almost every two weeks for work. Um, I was rarely in the city. But when I was in the city, I was hanging with y'all. And I appreciate y'all taking me around and showing me Boston, showing me Black Boston, because, you know, I didn't really like some of the other ethnicities in Boston. Um, and um, I just really felt, you know, this deep sense of belonging um, to y'all, not necessarily Boston, the city, but to y'all. And that really helped my adjusting to Boston. Um, so I really do appreciate y'all tapping into the different um, sides of Boston, whether it was, you know, Blacktoberfest, whether it was the different side projects that y'all were doing that were connected to your work or connected to y'all passions. Um, it really took me out of feeling like a robot because I'm so stuck in a routine. Mm -hmm. But each of y'all had y'all own fun things to do. And um, it reminded me that, you know, you're so much more than your job. I was really stuck on that, you know, career grind, but you're so much more than your job and your job doesn't define your identity. So thank you to all of you. Oh, you're welcome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here's a challenging question. Oh, Lord. Sure. I know. I know. Uh oh. Oh, I just lost it. Right? Wait here, wait here. See, the man you weren't supposed to ask. <laughs> no, this this might bring tears. Oh, oh gosh, don't look at me. What has been the hardest goodbye in life so far? And it doesn't have to be death. It can be a friendship that's no longer. It can be a job that's no longer. It could be someone who's passed away. Um, I'll go first because this is gonna be quick. <laughs> Very quick. Um, I had to say goodbye to my old self. Ooh, that can't. That's not gonna be quick. No, it is. It is. <laughs> that, that's it. That, that, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's, no, it. that's it. That's it. Do you want to? Do you want to add a why? Yeah. I mean, the why is because you know, so much was happening in my life personally between twenty. 16 and 2019 and then we go into a pandemic right mm -hmm. so through all of those years I was like dealing with a lot of personal stuff and then I was trying to fix everything mm. and I can't fix everything so I had to let some things go and in letting things go I had to let some parts of me that I thought was the way to be or the way to live and that had to die. So then when those things were dying from, you know, part of me and my identity and myself, I really had to sit with myself like, okay, so what's the direction of my life going in now? Mm. So, um, you know, I put myself into therapy. I was, you know, working on trying to figure out what was, what's like the best roadmap to, to get there. And I was like, ooh, I don't like that other person. Mm. So if I don't like that, I have to make changes. But what is the intention with those change? Who do I want to be? And how do I want to show up to the people that I say that I love and still be um, valuable and meaningful to them just as they're valuable and meaningful to me? Mm. Um, and to be a better loving and, and caring friend. Mm. I told y'all I was going to cry. Didn't I say there was going to be tears? I didn't. I, that's why Nadia spoke oh, first. Right. You know, she the crier. No, right. you know, much. no and honest, <laughs> honestly, I I think I have, that is probably the hardest thing for me too. And I've been sitting in a level of uncomfort mm. energy the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Um, and I think it's because I've had to break um, 
familiar thought patterns and processes mm -hmm. and experiences, how I would respond to people, how in certain situations I might have went along with it for the sake of their comfort because I don't want to disrupt or make them feel a way. And I recently had an, an encounter with someone where I took a different route. Mm -hmm. Normally I would have went the same way and it would have been whatever, but I literally had to put up a boundary in that moment. And I felt good about it. A mm -hmm. few days later, I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's but I, I realized that I too have been shedding the old or familiar Charlene that a lot of people have been used to knowing and comfortable with. Um, and so there, there are pockets of, of time where I'm like, I feel really unsettled right now mm. and I don't know why, or I feel really uncomfortable or like I, at times I might feel a little irritable because I'm, I'm, on, I'm unshedding, undoing whatever thought process I had before. So that has been the hardest for me too. Mm. I feel like those are really good because <laughs> right, you have to like change. Well, no, it's true, right? Like in order yeah. to improve yourself or go to the next level, like you really do have to be willing to let some stuff go. Yeah. So I agree with what Nadia and Charlene have said about, you know, that being a hard goodbye. I was trying to think of like other goodbyes that I've had to do. Um, I mean, people wise, I don't know. I always feel like people wise is always like a relative to me. Like it's hard yeah. not like so family oriented. So I would probably say almost any any of my relatives oh you know what I was gonna say almost any of them but this this was a hard goodbye um and I kind of realized it later <laughs> not as it, it was happening mm -hmm. um I would say from a people perspective would have been my grandmother and I don't mean her physical death my grandmother had dementia and so over <laughs> time you start to realize that you're losing that person mm -hmm. you know like the things that, that make people irritable when you have to repeat things over and over again. like that stuff didn't really matter right like you just right. repeat it over and over again but it's when like they don't recognize you anymore and you're a person like yes yeah, she recognizes that she loves you that you're mm -hmm. there but she doesn't really know who you are and that was a hard goodbye and it still is a hard goodbye because I always feel like grandparents are so special like I lived with my grandparents until I was three um and then I would visit them every summer and then, of course, you get older, you become a teenager, you don't go, you don't do that anymore. But like, they still just had that special place. Yeah. So I would say like, that was such a hard goodbye, because you're doing it in real time when they're still around. It's not an after thing. They are very much so still there. And so you're just like, you can't speak to them in the way that you would ordinarily or realizing there are moments of my life that she wouldn't, that she wouldn't be there for. And there are times now that like, you know, I wish, I wish she would see me in London. I wish she could see me doing certain things, or I wish I could talk to her physically about things and not just having a, a spiritual conversation. Um, mm. So I would say like that, that was really hard. Yeah. Tay? Um, mine might be a little weird. <laughs> uh, it was... And it's not necessarily what you think, but um, when I dropped my dad off at the airport after driving to Boston, like that was a really hard to buy because it signified that I was on my own. Mm. With, mm. At this point, I knew no one, you know, I didn't know anyone except the lady that hired me and the lady who agreed to uh, house me, you know, and then the lady who agreed to give me uh, furniture. Those are the three people that I knew in Boston and I worked with them. Um, and so just that mm -hmm. moment of, all right, your things are moved in. See you later. You know, just that was a really hard goodbye. Now, um, I think specifically because it marked me 
not just being on my own, but I got a chance, like, like now's my real chance to write my own story. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was some anxiety with that. Cause you know, as you like, for those who aren't thinking about it in this way, um, when you're a kid, your parent or guardian has a way that they want you to grow up. They have, um, uh, ideals that they strive for you to hit or meet um, or become and you do those things right mm-hmm. because you think it's the way but then when you turn loose and you have your own chance to be who you are like it like J. Cole say it could go up it could go down it can go you know however you want it to go but that was for me a defining moment because I was like all right I guess this is it I guess I'm on my own and all the times that you beg to like, no, I can do it myself. I want to do it myself or be independent. Like this was the real deal. And mm-hmm. that was a really tough goodbye, but also a really, um, a mighty hello, you know, to who, to the makings of who I wanted to be. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I have two because one is similar to Tay's, but one was actually a friendship. Mm-hmm. And I laugh because remember <laughs> Claudia's face. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time we talked about friends, I didn't be like, no, who, who that, mm-hmm. what is that? Mm-hmm. Um, Red card emoji. <laughs> but she, this was this was before I met you guys, Nadia. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we it was the type of friendship where literally she would come over. Well, she was at my house every single day, like didn't need a key. She could just walk in. Anybody will open the door for her. Anybody. Like we were that tight. Um, Saturday mornings literally would be here from sunup to sundown. We'd be, whether I made breakfast, we're just binge watching TV. It was that type of friendship. And um, she, her, you know, a man got in the way. Y'all know the story. <laughs> a man got in, in the in the way of the situation and me trying to be the friend and saying, hey, this isn't going the way you want it to go. Like, nope, this isn't, nope. Hey, hey, trying to look out for you. Hey, sis, hey, Bessie, hey. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes you get digmatized and <laughs> you just can't see past what's going on. And it actually started to interfere in our friendship in regards to the fact that the person she was dating we'll say dating was like stop listening to her she's jealous of you and you know she doesn't want what she wants what you have granted I had my own relationship but whatever um and instead of being like no this is my friend you stood by I, he's mine and I'm gonna stick beside him you know that that type of situation um and the friendship just fizzled it wasn't you know what I can't even say fizzled out it was a torch it tore like the friendship was torched and I think maybe like a couple of years later, we tried to reconnect and I thought it was genuine. You know, we were just like, look, and granted, I found out in therapy, you can never really wipe a a slate clean. Is that, is that the phrase? You can't, it's just not Uh possible. Um, But we had, you know, hadn't seen each other for a while, saw each other. And then I was like, Hey, can we talk? And we spoke and we're like, look, we can have, we can make two decisions here. We can either agree to wipe the cl- the slate the slate clean and just move forward and not talk about anything in the past, or we could just call it quits here and just you know there's no love lost. It is what it is. When I see you, I see you. And we had agreed to wipe the slate clean, and then I found out I was blocked on Instagram. So I was like, you know what? F this whole like. <laughs> just, now, wait a minute. Yeah. No, and it was just like I didn't do anything. And I understand maybe you were still hurt off of what happened and the connection that it had and you weren't ready to have to continue a friendship, which is fine. But tell me that. Like, I genuinely feel like... Yes. Oh, sure. Did you ask her why you were blocked? Like, is this a situation of her just no, like... I can't. I, she can't. She's blocked. I can't. No, I'm blocked. No, I was unblocked for a little bit because I remember I was able to go and see oh, something. Okay. That's what yeah. I wanted and to And then know. somebody, it was somebody who, like, she had bumped into them and they posted her, like, she was in a picture. And then when I pressed her name... It said, what is it? User not found or whatever it is. And I was like, I just mm-hmm. saw your stuff like last month. Like, what What did uh, I do? Like, that's what I wanted to know. Like, my thing is, I just, y'all know me. I'm the type of person, like, 
you can tell me, I can take criticism. I can take critique. You can tell me when I do something, I don't have a problem apologizing. I, if you can tell me why I, even if I don't feel I did it wrong, just knowing that I hurt you, I will apologize for that. That's another conversation we're going to have because I got to bring Renard into that, this whole apologizing situation. I will apologize for hurting you. Even if I don't feel like I did something wrong, the fact that what I did hurt you, I'm sorry, I hurt you. But for you to just kind of just be like, mm, I don't be friends with her no more. Bitch, tell me that. <laughs> like, tell me you don't want to be friends. Like, I just had another friend. We reconnected. And I I love her honesty because we were friends in high school. And we kind of just, it fizzled out. And then we kind of reconnected again. And then, you know, some stuff went down. And we kind of just stopped talking again. And then little by little, like, my parents passed. And I hit her up and I let her know because you were a big part of my life in high school. You knew my parents. I let her know. And then I kind of fizzled off. Again. You know me. I kind of, I'd be in and out. Like, I just, I can't, I, what is it? Your social media? It just, sometimes I just don't want to talk to nobody. And we were going to have a dinner. And then she ended up, like, we just ended up hanging at my house. And she legit was like, so I don't know how to ask this. She reminds me of April. Maybe it's because she's an Aries too. Um, <laughs> she was like, I, I don't want to be, like, I don't want to sound wrong when I say this, but, um, what are we doing? Like, are we trying to rebuild a friendship? Are we, she goes, because you reached out to me when your parents died, then I didn't hear from you. Then you told me you were getting married. Then you had a baby. I didn't even know you were having a baby till you posted a video on Instagram. Like I don't, and now you wanted to get together for dinner. Like what's happening? Like, I just want to know what I, I, I don't want to get involved if it's not going to be consistent. And I appreciated that. Like, I was just like, you. and honestly, I was like, I don't know. Like, I can't tell you this is what I want. I I appreciate our friendship. I appreciate clearly your transparency and how genuine and sincere you are. But I can't say, girl, I'm gonna call you every week uh, on Tuesday. I can't do that because I may want to talk to you this week and then I might not want to talk to anybody for the next two, three weeks. Like, that's just me. So that was one loss. The other loss is a loss, but also I think it's helped me in my strength and becoming who I am. Like when April said that, you know, I just take adventure and I challenge it. It was a loss of my dad. Like, yeah, I lost both parents in one month. And I think also to what April was saying, my mom had dementia. So I already kind of grieved her before she passed. But when my father passed, it was just like, what? Like, I remember talking to my cousin and I'm saying, okay, I can kind of understand like now, this is like now two years later, I'm like, oh, I can kind of understand maybe why my mom passed because it would have been hard to have Ramsey's and taking care of my mom all in one. Got it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can understand what you did there, God. But when my father passed, I was like, okay, bro, let's have a conversation because this don't make no type of sense whatsoever, like none. And I think why I struggled, and I remember telling my cousin on the phone, like when I was in the hospital with my dad because he was in a coma, I remember saying, when my mom passed, the rug was pulled from under me and I was able to get back up. I said those exact words. I said, if this man dies, I, I cannot promise you that I'm going to be able to get back up. Like, I just, I won't. And clearly I did. And he's still around. Like, this would be another topic, like superstition or whatever, believing in spirits and being guided. But he's still around. Like, they, he, I saw him for his birthday. He, he done showed up at Ramsey's birthday. Like, I've seen my dad like he's still hanging on so I guess technically it's a loss but a gain within because I I really have gained a guardian angel and I think he's part of the reason why I'm able to push myself to do certain things that I would definitely you know in other words be terrified to do where I miss him the most is you know me me, me and my family or you know when I have when when I want to vent about something he was the person I went to to talk to. Like he would be, he was the level. Cause y'all know, I just, I'd be going from zero to a thousand in two seconds. Like, I don't even think I just, I just talk. He would be the one to call me like, sure. You know, maybe you shouldn't have said it, especially with Renard. He'd be like, mm, maybe you shouldn't exactly have, you're a little rough. <laughs> maybe you should just smooth it out a little bit. So the fact that, I mean, I have you guys, but the fact that I don't have that elderly guidance in my life 
that that to me has been those two have been the biggest challenges and probably why I was kind of a little skeptical when Shar reached out to me and I was like mm, I already tried an adult friend I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do it again but I'm happy that I did because you guys are- can we talk about that though like yeah. I feel like you see it on social media every now and then people are like why is it so hard when women lose friendships like yo y'all be so angry about like losing a friendship and all this type of stuff it like I feel because I've done that too like I lost a friend and I felt like damn not that you know my mom was like she's not really a friend <laughs> moms <laughs> always know they do they do you know they 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 always know they always know some shit don't be don't be looking right <laughs> like no 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 it's fine it's fine it's fine and it wasn't fine no. um but I just feel like people miss why it hurts so much it's different it's not like a man a relationship with a man like this is supposed to be the person or people whatever that you can go to when that shit doesn't work out when like you know what I mean or something you might just not know how to tell him yeah. or, or her you know whatever the case may be right so you like need somebody to bounce off with or people you've grown bonds with because you've just done stuff with them yeah. or they've been there with you for a while and I feel like people like misunderstand why yeah. it hurts so much when you lose a friend really that's does. like what because you pour like, your all what the hell? You, you pour know? you pour your everything like I'm not gonna lie. I I pour my all into this friendship I have with you guys. Like if, if we get into an argument and it's like, I don't want to fuck with you no more. Like, wait, no, <laughs> like it's just a, like, I, we as women, and maybe it's because women move on an emotional level, but when we have a friendship, like you're my, you're my, every, like you're my everything. Like I tell you y'all, I clearly have no filter. I tell you guys things where it's like, CMI like yeah you really didn't have to put even even with you know the the Nigerian Voltron like you can ask Emmy or any of them how many times they'd be like um, shoot I really don't need to know that and I'm just like but but you're a family like you're my like I pour it's bond building yes. and you have to like break that bond like are y'all fucking crazy I'm gonna kill you <laughs> I'm gonna stop I will stalk you I'm stalking hey, you if you try to blood out. I just give my blood, sweat, and tears to this relationship, and you're just gonna do some foul shit. Like that's real fucked up. We done been to New York. We done y'all done seen some things. We, you, we in here forever. Like and, and, right, and you have to like, and you care about that person, right? So you can be done with the relationship, but then you'll be like, damn, I wonder how they're doing. Or damn, so I'm like, damn, I gotta wonder about you, but I ain't gonna ask. Like I ain't even gonna check in on you. I'm just gonna wonder. So fuck. And now I'm blocked on social media, so I can't even see how you doing. <laughs> My lord, I, I, you know, I think, I think what we all eventually have to realize is that we need to find a healthy balance between how we manage our familial friendships, our platonic friendships, and our romantic friendships. Right? Hmm. Uh, I think sometimes, depending on where we are in the phase of our life, we put too much emphasis on one or the other. When really we should try to have a healthy balance of all three because it really adds to our personal development and it also adds to what we can give those other areas of of, of familial, uh, platonic and romantic love and friendships. And I feel like in the instance with the girl who was quote unquote digmatized, she probably prioritized it the wasn't romantic. A quote. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a quote. Remove the. Quotes. I don't know the young lady, so I will. I pull do. Up, uh, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. So, so are they together? No. See, that's why it hurt so much because you ain't even with that person. So remember when I said April was a firecracker? <laughs> Listen, she's, Pixie she's does been got lit. something to say. She's been lit. <laughs> no, but I, I really feel as though like this is not something that we were really taught to find balances mm -hmm. in right because you know i know culturally haitians always say that you you, you don't have no friends your family is your friend your well, cousin my mama's like you got no friends my mama said your friends ain't gonna do nothing but get you in trouble <laughs> my mama didn't like none of my well i mean this is pre before dementia my mama right. didn't like none of my if she saw anybody getting close to me no i don't like her why she didn't do nothing i don't like her right and so i'm you your friend no right <laughs> I can't tell you about this boy that I'm sneaking around with. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you I definitely say, wasn't telling I her could, that. I can say that now. <laughs> Who gonna right. That's the air horn. That's the air horn mo moment right there. Okay. Well, yeah. No, okay. go ahead, Nadia. Sorry, finish your thought. No, 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 no. I was just saying, like, you know, because we have like 
those different hard constructs of what like friendship means in the beginning of our lives. Mm -hmm. And then we try to change that to say, you know what, I require this as a meaningful aspect of having a good friend. I expect X, Y, Z from family, even Mm -hmm. though family may not have this perception or this understanding, but this is what I need from my family. And it's okay for me to request this of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, the same thing goes um, for all areas of our life. And I really think it's important for us to be honest about the things that we need from the different areas of our life. And that's why it hurts. You were honest, you were bond building with these people and all of a sudden it's not there no more. So a piece of you is like missing. So there's a void. And it's hard because you invested time into this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to be at odds with your family members because one, you know, you didn't choose them, but you love them. But it's hard to be at odds because you have so much memories. You have so much. (laughs) You have so much that you've endured with them as a family. And when things go awry, you like, you know, well, damn, like, surely we could be above this issue we could be above the situation mm-hmm. so yeah the hurt the hurt runs deep no matter it do the, the it hurt do. Runs deep, no matter the 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 instance but I think it's important for us to try to find that balance and then of course with the balance comes boundaries you've been talking to Renard no I don't <laughs> nobody husband oh no ma'am oh no ma'am no ma'am I know. I, I need to. I, I need to work wrap me that. into that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not it. I, I, wait, I wait. do not have boundaries, but go ahead, Tay. Before we move to the next piece, something I realized when you were saying, Shu, about um, wiping the slate clean, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that we pick up where we left off. And it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that we can be the same type of friends. Like, there's still a level of feeling each other out Mm -hmm. that has to occur but also just because we wipe the slate clean doesn't mean that all right you get full access maybe that other person is also like I'm not sure where this is going to go so I'm going to remain guarded and Hmm. maybe it's the level of their trust because sometimes it's like okay well what did I do what did I do it wasn't even about you at that Hmm. point like it really wasn't because they have to feel comfortable with the choices and decisions that they make. But also, if there's some shame there, they got to deal with that. Like, that's not for you to apologize for. Um, because I, th- I think if we approach more things in life as from a from a non-what-did-I-do perspective or a non-guilt perspective, we f- may find out more of the story that we don't have to take ownership for. Mm-hmm. They'll find a place to put that ownership. Okay. It's not on us. I never and thought of that. What's consistency to you too, right? Like, we, uh, everybody is like older now. We have stuff going on. I'm the heavy on the, I might not talk to you every single day, but if you're my friend, we you're can my pick friend. up where we left We off. have that same yeah. five minutes of the day together. Then yeah, we can check in. Otherwise, I get it. Like, you're probably busy doing something. I'm probably busy doing something so like what does consistency look like when you're in your 30s consistently looks like nadia's wordle wordle submission every day and right. yes. oh, that, that is wait a minute oh the consistency i said it like we still playing in my defense mm. like i said i'm a little bit robotic i have a routine and you know, mm. i really enjoy the wordle so that has been a part of my morning routine when i'm on the toilet so you know, for me, Amen. Amen again. To answer April's question about what does consistency look like in our 30s, I think, you know, the consistency is not necessarily a, a timetable per se, but there's a certain intentionality when you reach out to people, right? Yeah. I know we have our group chat and we've had our group chat for years now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but <Yeah>. also <laughs> and if it ever leak, I said what I said. <laughs> but, um, Amen. Amen again. But, um, you know, we, whether it's banter, whether it's a full blown conversation, when we tap in and when we check in, we know where we all coming from. Right. right. So it doesn't always have to be, you know, something serious. It could be lighthearted. And I know that the bond is still there. That lets me know that we're still connected. Yeah. So 
even when April misses a few days, when 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 that five day mark hit, I'm like, sis, you got to text us to let us know you alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need, you know. Right. I know April is. You know, she's six hours away. away. I know and she's six hours yeah, away. Yeah, that's what's making me lag more and more now, especially like sometimes I'm just busy with work, but now it's harder because you guys are having these full on conversations by the time you get hours, there like, <laughs> after I've done half my day, and I'm like, damn. And then I get up in the morning and I try to be respectful. I don't know if y'all are like me, so I don't know if your phones are on silent. I don't know any of these things. So I'm like, I can't really text them right now. So let me like try to wait and then I forget again. April, yes. just just send a text. You see, mm-hmm. let me tell you something. I wake up what well, 3 45. And even at 3 45, I still see that there is an unread message, whether it's a quartal or a wordle <laughs> from Nadia <laughs> or Nadia. Tay. There's always, Nadia one Tay. There's, there's always, always one, one message. There's always one message. I kid you not. I looked at it this morning. I'm like, who is still playing? <laughs> Why is it still Wordle happening? and Quirtle. Wordle and Quirtle. And like, yes. I mean, like, I wish yeah. I made, but you know what? It was, I, I will not lie. It was fun when we were all doing it. And then I don't, I know, did I stop first? I think I might've stopped first. And then slowly it started to fizzle out. <laughs> it's like Nadia and Tay said, fuck y'all. I'm gonna keep playing this game. Right. All right. Everyone. Final, final words to yourself. Oh, God. 10 years from now, not 10 years ago, if you can tell yourself something in the, like your future self something, what would it be? I would just tell my future self to be open to all that is good. But how do you know if something's good or not? Discernment, baby. We gonna discern. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, I would tell my future self, I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do between now and December 30th, 32, but I would say I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. You did that shit. You mm-hmm. did. Pause before we continue with that, because how often do we actually say that to ourselves? Everybody else will say it, but how right. often do we actually tell ourselves that we're proud of them? I said that to myself two weeks ago. Amen. <gasps> Come on. <laughs> I don't say it often enough. I, said, no. I, I realize I really don't say it to myself often enough. Um, so and you're killing it, April. Like you was you you killing it out here. Like you done yeah, packed yeah, your yeah, whole yeah. bags up and left. Right, <laughs> Thank across Thank the, you. A, I almost said across the country, across the world, <laughs> the world. Yeah. Well, it's real. It's really crazy too because you, you ever see those things where it's like. Be thankful for the things you you asked for, like to, you prayed about like years ago. And that's literally, I realized, is literally it. Like when I was younger, I was like, oh, I want a job where I can travel and like work from different places. Like I have literally done that. So it's wild. So I'm trying to also sit back and think about things that I might have said before and just kind of see how it all lined up. Char, what would you say to your future self, from your, yourself in 10 years? similar to April I would just say good job good job and that just encompasses everything the way I'm living the way I'm moving how I'm showing up day to day waking up every day um I would just tell myself good job hey I don't really have anything besides mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason is and the reason is because like um like elders when you just sitting with your elders and they knew something they don't mm. say anything because they've said it time and time again so when it happens they just say because mm-hmm. 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 it was already right. there they already saw it the vision was mm-hmm. there so mm-hmm. that's, that's true i would tell myself to relax like to learn to relax <laughs> like no you know what no no you years like uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make it even better. I'm gonna tell myself, "Thank you for relaxing." Um, saw what I did there. You saw what I did there. I saw that. Because I, I honestly, that. guys, I really, I from and also doing research. If you do not like take care of your mental, Talk about it. your actual physical will deteriorate. Like. Mm-hmm. with having anxiety you can it, it'll start with it and I feel like everybody's being diagnosed with anxiety now um it'll start with anxiety but if you think about it if you don't take care of that if you continue to let anxiety control you that then becomes a heart problem 
Mm-hmm. And there are way too many of us already dying from heart attack or having heart attacks or strokes or everything like that. So I'm going to thank myself in 10 years for finally just taking a seat and relaxing and learning self care Amen. Uh-huh. because mm-hmm. I need that on top of essence fest, but we'll talk about that later. I'm trying to get my permission slip signed. <laughs> you do that. Please. Yes. But thank you, ladies, for being on here with me. Um, I have nothing else to say. I mean, if you guys want to drop, I know Nadia don't have no more social media. Uh, but if the rest of y'all want to drop your social media, I mean, I will tag you anyway. Uh, any upcoming activities or who you belong with, any groups or nothing? Nobody wants to say nothing. Nobody wants to shop. Nothing. No. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I will. Go ahead, I'm, April. Don't. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you don't look at me on Facebook because um, <laughs> I'm not anymore like that. So. <laughs> well you are you relaunching your podcast this may and other things make me really really want to it is a little bit hard for me to decide um the when and the why right and the reason why I say that is because like this whole high school board thing it's not like one of those like I have to worry about being kicked off I just also like recognize this for a high school yeah. so sometimes I am unfiltered um but I also did it for my own enjoyment so I might I might yeah. bring it back. Um, I mean, so anyway, I'm happy to have you come on, on on a reoccurring basis if you want to do that. So I feel like I owe you another episode anyway. Um, well, no, I turned it into this one, so you're good. Oh, oh, I'm good. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can find me on Instagram. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say my name, I laugh because my friend was like, like, porn? No. Um, it's Miss Big POV point of you, not porn of you. Um, so M S B I G P O V on Twitter and Instagram. And if it's prefer- for professional reasons, you can find me on LinkedIn, but I don't do the social thing on LinkedIn. So really, if it's not professional, don't reach out to me. <laughs> the disclaimer of all disclaimers. She just gave. Anybody else? I don't have social media because I don't feel as though that, you know, we, it doesn't really capture mm. anything of substance for me. Like, I think it's just straight ads. There's no dialogical conversations anymore. Like, I just really don't enjoy social media. So I don't have it. And I don't exist to half of y'all anyway. So <laughs> I know it was the longest time people didn't think Nadia was real. <laughs> right. right. Oh my God, the ghost. She's here. She came out. She came out. Not, not in that way, guys. Not in that way, guys. Yeah.